What up, everybody? Welcome to Legacy TV and the Convo Podcast. And you know what? I want you to stop what you're doing right now, and I want you to pay attention today. Because, man, I got something going on that's, that touches really close to home to me. And this is one of my good friends. And I'm going to tell you guys, we actually had, did the podcast before together, and we talked about his story. And unfortunately, I'm still getting good at this stuff. And we had to do it again. But, you know, I'm glad it kind of worked out this way. And I'm not for different reasons. But I think today is a much bigger purpose and reason that he's here with me today. And I want to start off right off the bat by letting you guys know that this gentleman right here, my good friend, has already, he's already beaten and destroyed stage four cancer. My good friend, Gary Heyer. What's up, brother? My What's student, up, thank my, you. my brother for life. Yes, thank, sir. Thank you for Always. being here today, bro. Thank you for having me, man. It's an honor and pleasure to be here on set with you, bro. I'm proud of what you're doing. Thank you, brother. You know, yeah. um, it's been fun. <clears throat> it's been a, a challenge, but, you know, I feel like it's something I got to do. It's something that God put me in a position to do and to help and to be entertainment, to be purposeful to be of service to human beings and and yeah. and on top of what i do already the martial arts just kind of like <clears throat> what you do is to, to help people and right and uh you know if i can help anybody out there whether it be through martial arts or my experiences or the people that i bring on here and their experiences brother man if i can help one person then I already won. That's the, that's the mission, bro. And if I we all had that mentality, won. that's what it's all about. I think that's why we were created is to be here in community and share our stories. When we get to share what we go through to help other people and when it lands on other people and it makes a difference in their life, there's, there's a lot of reward in that in so many ways. And so I'm just I'm glad that you see that and you're doing that with what you uh, all the things that you're doing. You know, Gary, I'll tell you a funny story <clears throat> just on the subject. I remember when I was young. And the first time I saved someone's life, I was actually a child myself, but there was a, a like a baby that had fell into the pool on the deep end. And I, I was very young. I, I, I think I was maybe four or five that young, but I knew how to swim very well. Mm. I swam. I noticed the kid had fell in the pool. I swam, went underwater and pulled the baby up and saved the baby's life, mm -hmm. the, the kid's life. Because yeah. I, I remember going under and seeing the baby, like, trying to swim up, and it couldn't. It was it was down there. And that was the first time people gave me that feeling of a hero. Mm -hmm. and, and everybody was patting me on the back. And that feeling I still remember to this day, bro. Right. You know, that feeling of helping somebody. Not not to be, like, rewarded, but the feeling of, like, I helped somebody. I saved somebody's life. Yeah. What could be more powerful than that? And, you know, experiencing yeah. that a couple more times throughout my life, man. <clears throat> That's what I want to be here for for the rest of my life. Oh, you keep doing what you're doing. You're going to yeah. continue to do Hell that yeah. for sure. But, brother, let's. Yeah. Today's not about me. Today is all about you. And, you know, I want you guys to know that we're going to get to the purpose of why this is my first ever emergency podcast and why it's so important. But I don't want to start off right right there. I want to take it back a little bit. I know you've gone through the story a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. And. I know it's difficult to talk about, but let's take it back to uh, because I've already told everybody you already are a warrior. You already yeah. destroyed stage, stage four cancer, which I, I don't remember exactly. But what was the chances of survival? So I, we'll go back to like I was diagnosed six years ago with stage four colorectal cancer. Six years. That would be. Um, 2000, 2017, 2017 it was three days before christmas exactly th in 2017 so it rocked my world right at the holidays you know i had a uh, my daughter was 10 years old at the time i was 41 years old and i got hit with this disease and i didn't really know uh i didn't have any symptoms really and i'm colorblind and it just so happened that one night i went and i peed in the toilet and our bathrooms connected and the door was open i didn't want to flush to wake up my wife so i left it in there and I just I left to work the next morning and my wife calls me the next day and says hey Gary I think uh, you got a little blood in your urine you need to get that checked out so I called my doctor and it led to a series of tests which ultimately led to a colonoscopy where they found the original tumor in my colon and rectum so I would have never even known I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for me so not flushing that toilet that night I know this is gonna sound <clears throat> funny to everybody but you know 
I grew up in Santa Ana. You know, okay, colonoscopy means exactly They're like. They're sticking a camera up your butt and check, going up into your colon all the way up until it gets to To your see intestine. what, though? The colon? To, yeah, to look in the colon. So it starts the, at the base the col- of your rectum. And, and the colon is what? The colon is what? Is where it holds all the, it processes food. all the feces. Yeah, and you're going to now evacuate So, so, through so the that rectum. organ. Is it, uh-huh. is it an organ? <laughs> yeah, it's an organ. <laughs> Guys, yes. I'm, I, I'm seriously not stupid. I'm just trying to be learn a little bit as well as we go. Yeah. Uh, that that organ mm-hmm. starts to have cancer. Yeah, so uh, because I had it tested to see if it had anything to do with the genetics of, of my family history or whatnot, and it had nothing to do with that. It had everything to do with how I created this environment in my body. And we're finding this, that colorectal cancer specifically, an advanced stage colorectal cancer, which is what I had, stage four there's no more stages after that so i had uh, several uh tumors in my colon and then it went into my lymph nodes and into my liver but uh yeah. this is all what created by the environment that i created in my body see i I'm, i was an athlete as a kid right and i grew up really fast and i and i grew like over a summer i grew almost a foot so like there was this massive growing spurt in high school and then carried on into college. And, but during those years, like we didn't have great education around food. In fact, here in America, we don't have great education around food. No, we don't. It's just facts. And, yeah, I mean, and the food that we have access to is garbage, right? Yeah. So, and everything that the, that, anything that being, that's processed is basically garbage. Oh right? yeah. Like we're so far taken away from how we were designed. <laughs> Pro- we were they talking, should just put garbage. Right. Instead exactly. of processed. Right. right because exactly. at the end it of the day, it should just go straight to the garbage. Yeah. But, you know, we live in this concrete jungle now, bro. Yeah. And and I I believe where my faith is at and everything, we we were created as a human species about 6,000 years ago. There was no Vons or Albertsons or, or there was no pharmacies. There was the Garden of Eden. And that's the way that we were designed. And even our ancestors that trekked through the, the countrysides and did their thing, like, Bro, we're way removed from that. We sit in a in a house and a desk. And, you know, if you're lucky, you go to a gym. You know, hardly anybody's getting outside anymore. But but on top of that, we're not we're not going to grow our food. We're going to a store. We're trusting them. And let's just face it. I mean, all the chemicals they're putting on our produce to the to the bagged and canned and packaged products throughout all the rest of the store. Like it's just. It's scary, man. Yeah, I, yeah, I see I, the statistics, and it's not a good situation. The thing that people, I'm, <clears throat> I realize a lot more as I get older, and I actually tell my students this mm-hmm. as far as training goes. Yeah. Um, but if you think about it, it, it relates to your body as well. You have one body this whole life. That's it. And just basically, like people think their body is almost like a vehicle where you could just, I'll oh, drive it, wear it out. And then I'll just hop into another vehicle. No, you can't do that with your body. So whatever gas, whatever fuel you're putting into that car, Mm -hmm. it's going to add up. Yeah. And that car is going to break down over time if you're not taking care of the car. Absolutely. Am I right? Absolutely. And you got basically, you got this one vehicle, which is your body, Mm -hmm. this whole life that you live, you got that one chance to make sure you do the right things, eat the right things, put the right things in your body to be able to live here longer. Right, and if you're not eating right, if you're not taking care of yourself, you already are putting yourself at a risk to get out of here a lot quicker. Right, and so is that. Do you think that maybe that lifestyle it led directly to where I'm at now? Because it, you know? th- that relates to what you're putting <clears throat> in your body. Basically, the, right. the the colon is like the well, you're processing everything, and I had disease not just in my colon; it stretched through my lymphatic system, and then it, I had seven tumors in my liver. So I've had half of my liver removed. We'll get to that in a second, but let me finish my, this topic because it's important that everybody hear this. We're, we Food is very addictive, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're teaching, and it starts as kids. We gotta be really careful with what we're feeding our kids from the cereals in the morning and, and then the, the nuggets and all the things that we allow our kids to eat, the, the macaroni and cheese boxes. I grew up on that. We all grew up on that, right? And and it's just detrimental for the long term. And we get addicted to those types of things. And we find as adults, like we we just carry a lot of those food habits into our adult life, and then we get very stationary. Do you think part of it is also the way America's, you know, not maybe not just America, but maybe a lot of the world has gotten accustomed to not having the time to be able to cook for themselves. 
and to have those fresh foods so they just go get those easy fixes which is like for example the cereal mm -hmm. because you that, that well, how long does that take you pour like a couple of flakes in the in the cup in the in the bowl and pour a little milk and your your son is sitting there eating you don't have that doesn't take any of your time do you mm -hmm. think maybe that could be a possibility of yeah. why why people eat like trash for i example? do believe so i think that we've been completely confused and and been led to this point where we think we're too busy to make that important yeah, yeah. right um or don't know how to cook <laughs> you're either going to create time to make it important or or there's going to be a situation like i'm in where you, you have, have to, to make, make it, it important, important or else you're a dead man right respect <clears throat> so so i i suggest if you're looking at the other end of this camera and you're watching this this podcast um make good choices now and don't like try and just make this old whole like lifestyle overhaul make a better choice today than you did yesterday and just try and be making better better decisions when it comes to the type of things that you're putting into your body you're allowing your mind to process the people least, you're hanging out with like you at know, least it's care about at least care about it more yeah pay, but don't pay let attention don't let life pass you by and you don't you don't pay attention to that part of it right because when it, all of a sudden it'll catch up to you Mm -hmm. out of nowhere and then you'll realize oh i need to pay attention to it mm -hmm. or i'm gonna die right right so that's basically kind of so that's where i was and where i've kind of been well i've lived a very healthy lifestyle here so, so when i was diagnosed six years ago six and a half years ago they gave me six months to live bro yeah so i got a call i was sitting i was uh, i went in that colonoscopy and the doctor, I like, I'm waking up. It's a, it's an operation. They put you to sleep, and they put a camera up there, and they do their thing and take their pictures. So I wake up. My eyes are waking up. I see my wife just bawling her eyes out, with, being held by the nurse, and I see my family around. And then the doctor comes up, and he says, "We found cancer." Just straight to it, right? And so I close my eyes again, and when I finally get a little unfogged, I uh, we've he wants to send me to CT, which is a CAT scan, you know, scanning the body to see if there's anything anywhere else because. As you stage up, it means it's gone otherwhere in your body. So stage one would be, I have it in my colon and rectum, right? And my main tumor was about the size, uh, it was like 10 and a half centimeters. It was rather big. Yeah. And then there was another one up there. And then they found 17 lymph nodes. And wow. then they also found seven tumors in my liver. And so that was stage four, right? Now it's all the way blown out. And so the, the typical metastases from a colorectal cancer disease when it goes up in stage is your liver and your lungs. It didn't hit my lungs yet, okay, at that point. Um, and then so I, I, I've, done, I've been so thankful and blessed to be able to go to a great facility like City of Hope. They're cutting edge. They're leaders in the cancer fighting world. And Shout I, out to City of Hope in, in Los Angeles. They're in Duarte, California, Duarte. the main campus. Duarte. They're actually, they're, they've got a few campuses, but the main Shout campus out. is in Duarte. My doctors are amazing. Uh, they're very good at what they do. And uh, there's just more to the cancer fight that I've uncovered that helps a lot of people, right? So like mad respect for what they do. Like they've, I've had major surgery. I, my first surgery was 11 hours with seven surgeons. They removed my colon and rectum. I've got a colostomy bag for the rest of my life. So I got my intestines kind of hanging out of my belly here and I got a bag covering up. And so I've had that now for five and a half years. They also took half my liver and my gallbladder and a bunch of mass with those, those lymph nodes during that time. One surgery, seven surgeons, 11 hours, massive overhaul. And then, so I, I did 46 and this, rounds of and, chemo. And, and they told you, so this was the initial plan to, because when you said they only gave you six months to, right. to, to live, unless they do this. Unless they do this. And then I would probably be on chemo the rest of my life is what they were telling me. Wow. So the original plan to get me out of the, out of the, the bad, like death, right, mm -hmm. was eight rounds of chemotherapy. I ended up doing 46, so you could tell the story is really going to continue. So the original plan was eight over four months, and then 30 rounds of radiation over a 30 to 45 day period of time. It ended up being about 45 days because I couldn't handle it Ra towards the end. Radiation and chemotherapy are two are, different things. Fuck. So think of chemotherapy like a global attack. Like it's going to go after everything. It it shoots your immune system down like all that stuff radiation can be similar to where to like target it. Like they could do like a whole brain radiation or they could get really specific and focused. And so this time what they did is they did a focused radiation right on the butthole area because my main tumor was colorectal. 
the rectum is the bottom part. You know, you got your sphincter muscle and then you got your rectum mm -hmm. and then the colon goes up and it starts and then it goes up a little bit and then it ends up in going to your intestines and beyond. Right. So my main tumor was right here at the, at the top of that rectum sphincter muscle going up into my rectum. And so we targeted that tumor after eight rounds of chemotherapy. So I just went off of that 30 rounds of radiation on there and that was miserable. So uh, like, just, uh, I don't want to make, take too much time, but how right. does, how, like after, how do you feel? I, like, what does that feel like going through so chemo chemotherapy versus like, radiation? Yeah. Chemo is like a, a, a toxic fog, right? Like how it, long does it last? Oh afterwards? God, dude. I mean, I've done 46 rounds of it up to like, so I did that over like a three and a half year period of time because so I did the chemo and, and it wasn't so bad at the beginning it caused a lot of neuropathy that I still have to this day, the original drugs that I was doing. Neuropathy meaning? Neuropathy is a nerve damage that, okay. will, the, that fries your nerves at your extremities. So like my, my hands get really, really cold and like they, oh, they're, it's like they're always in a light, light socket. And the same with my feet and my legs will ache up to my, so neuropathy yeah. really sucks. And there's, there's different versions of neuropathy. Chemo-induced neuropathy usually goes away and it's like a variation of how intense it could be. Mine was pretty intense from what my doctor was telling me, and and it hasn't gone away completely, but it's a lot better. Fuck right? hey, man. Crazy. Yeah, so that was that was an onset that, that happened a long time ago. So, yeah. Radiation, chemotherapy. Two different things. Radiation was more like it burns. It's, it's something that will affect that targeted area. Yeah. Like if it's on the skin, like if it's somewhere, like women that have breast cancer, you'll they'll get like like a really bad burn. Um, yeah, so it's just different. And then the internal feeling is, is, you know, just varies. Mine was really bad. It burned like crazy. crazy man. <clears throat> so I had that major surgery after the radiation, they gave me a little bit of break and then I had that major surgery and then they did more chemo to kind of like clean up because after surgery, you can kind of like emit spores of cancer or whatever and, and spike things up or whatever. Right. So they wanted to blast with chemo again. So I did that. Um, and then I went in my first remission cool and i was out like i did that that was probably about a year of work and then i was about six remission, months remission. remission meaning like they couldn't detect any more cancer in my Fucking body a. dude crazy right but then it came back and that was devastating it came back in my liver and that, so like how long after that like i had like maybe a five to six month break and then like when now let's get also into like i know like when you were diagnosed with this stuff you, you started making some changes like yeah i made some really big so i like i said like mad respect the city of hope and what they do medically and what they have access to like they're really good at chemo radiation prescription drugs and surgeries yeah they're really good at that yeah it's but, you're, what you're saying is like you went the um what is it? I I forget what the the word for it Western the Western approach yeah this Western medicine approach which there you is go. which is that right <laughs> Sorry, and guys. then there's this this holistic or Eastern approach right because a lot of which the, is all like the the big machines and well like, it can be like now we're talking about like frequency and stuff like yeah, that and, yeah. and different different type of stuff that you can do with light and sound and I do do that and that's that's really deep but there's there's these other layers and it starts quite simply like eastern medicine and or holistic type medicine is more like what you get from earth yeah it's more of like the fruits and the vegetables and living water and and cannabis and mushrooms and and ginseng and and all there's so many roots fruits and herbs and vegetables that that our great creator created with this divine body that interacts together bro like and we've been so misinformed about that we've been nobody talks about the like it doesn't it, we kind of gloss over it in high school yeah but then we're also like just eating taco bell and mcdonald's yeah 100 right and so we're not we're not being led right from the very beginning to build a, a lifestyle because it's so good like i love my lifestyle now and so yes i did flip it i was that first year i was eating the same way and my doctor was saying eat whatever you want Eat whatever you want, and legacy. The toxicity, I bro, bet was you could, so bad. I bet I, I could only imagine. Like I haven't been through it. You know, I've had family members. You know, my my, my aunt. You know, I reached out to you and my right. aunt, my aunt. For you guys that don't know, my aunt passed away uh, last year from stomach cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, she had twenty. I think twenty percent of her stomach left because she had had it removed. I don't know all the details, but that's what I remember. And then it came back and it spread to her ovaries and then she just chose to like, you know, write it out. 
Yeah. So uh, I lost her. And so, man, it's like just going through losing someone to that, you know, and and I can only imagine when you first heard it, you were probably thinking in your head too, like, damn, what have I been eating? What have I been feeding? Like, what have I putting in through my body a little bit? Like that, that really, sometimes I hate to say this, bro, but it takes, and not just with health, but even the people you're around and things in life you're doing, sometimes it, it takes something bad to happen to people for them to re- realize w- what they're doing to themselves. 100%. Yeah. And, and, and as much as it sucks and, like that's why I, I, I hope I can help some people to not get to that point is like if you care about that stuff before you won't get to that point where it's like too late or you're in a battle for your life or you're in a place where something bad could happen to you like do you know what I mean you can yeah. if you can avoid it why not try to avoid it and be here for your loved ones and people as much as you can and and I feel like I've been I've also done wrong with my eating and stuff and something like that happening i can only imagine what was going on through your head bro and and i can understand like why you started immediately thinking i gotta make some changes bro like i gotta eat right i gotta start drinking yeah what i put in my body matters now there there was a a click in that realization but i'll tell you what really sent me into that that journey was the the toxicity yeah from the western way right like because i was being taught to eat whatever you want don't worry about that alkaline stuff or whatever and the alkaline topic is very convoluted and corrupted but you know they just tell you they kind of steer you away from that and say eat whatever you want you're going to be hungry you're going to be nauseous if you have an appetite whatever sounds good is fine you'll be okay and there's it's like totally discounting it and so i you know you tell a food addict that yeah and you're not like it's just going to lead them to where I was, and it was I was very toxic, bro, and I was in a lot of pain, and there's a lot of things going on, and so I ended up, you know, the water was introduced to me. Um, I ended up looking into cannabis to being a solution rather than the prescription drugs, and I figured out through the great guidance of a fantastic friend and and a brother of mine, Mike over at Scorpion. He makes all my all my products and and he's taught me how to treat the cannabis plant like a vegetable again eating, integrating into our diet and our nutritional lifestyle and and bro it's changed my life and so now i like i having a relationship with cannabis in that way of like understanding it's not a drug i'm not going to address a headache with it or a bout of anxiety or just try and take a little bit to help me sleep at night I'm going to integrate it in my diet every single day and nurture that endocannabinoid system. So lo and behold, I I eliminated 25 different prescription drugs because of that plant alone. Wow. I started juicing and it started clearing my system out and letting my, my give my gut a break because we're processing all of the, this meat and processed foods and dairy that doesn't, that, that our body doesn't break down very well. Like there is some benefit to it to some people and and you know now where i'm at with my diet like eating for your blood type and getting real specific we could talk about all that stuff but it's uh, it's it's not like the our body processes certain things a certain way and right. when you have a high level of toxic chemicals going through your body that are also constipating you and making things even harder to digest and, yes. and process it was really bad so i had to figure this stuff out because of that and then when i started doing genetic testing down the road and different things i realized that the cancer was something that i created and gosh darn it yes i do need to make a change and i do need to pay attention and that's what i've become an advocate for and i started sharing my story online to be able to to be you one of those guys a front line what we call a front line soldier warrior um you know just representer um you know bat- battling for for yourself battling for your family battling for everyone that has been through cancer and everyone that's going through cancer or gonna go through cancer or have a friend or a family member that they've lost you've been on those front lines and i've been watching you bro and it's amazing it's fucking amazing dude thank you bro you know and and it's like i'm so touched by seeing you do it it you know i i myself try to be a good person and seeing you know one of my friends going through this and 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 being there just trying to help just trying to you know let's fight this thing let's help let's get let's get through it together let more knowledge more research think about what you guys are doing think about what you're eating it's amazing to see dude and and you went on a fucking rampage with it 
yeah. you're still at it. And you got yeah. so many people that care about you and that are following yeah. your story yeah. and that are inspired by you, bro. And I know I am fucking inspired by you every time I see you, every time I talk about you, um, you know, and and, you know, it, you you made the juices. You help people with the water. I think the juices are are, are awesome. I think you know if people. Some people are blind and only think like can't they hear the word cannabis to think oh you know smoking weed. Like no, yeah. that's not that's not the only thing that people use it for. Right. It's actually good for inflammatory Absolutely. and lots of other di- different things. Do some research. You know, right. like if you, if you just think like that, do some little bit of research and you'll start to see how many people it, it helps. Yeah. Rather so than many how ways. many people, rather than how many people it hurts, right? And the sad thing is, there's people still locked up to this day behind because of that behind yeah. marijuana, which know, they shouldn't it's be. Horrible. It should be released. I mean, it's legal yep. now, and you know yeah. that's a that's another diff- different that's different a topic. whole other podcast that we can jump into. Different I'm topic. A, I'm a big advocate for the plant. Yeah. I my, and so yeah. So yeah. anyway, um, thank you for that, bro. Yeah. That means yeah. the world to me. And the, and the company that you started and that you like during your you know battle and yeah and and everything that you went through afterwards is higher power wellness and and you right. sell all the products yourself and it's so cool because you know it's not like made in a factory or in a store right. you literally made the juices yeah, yourself bro and you're with yeah. your family which is right you know quality time it's a family business and and man i support uh higher power wellness to the fullest bro thank you you know and i think and i want wish always wish you the mu- much success bro because it's like why why are we here we're here to help people and right. this is one of the biggest issues we have in the world today if you guys don't see it Right. Is your health. And, you know, when you get older, what happens to you? You don't think about it when you're young. Mm-hmm. You don't give a fuck. Right. And all they want to do is, you know, enjoy life and have fun. And then all of a sudden something happens to you that, that and you have to go back and think about what you've been doing wrong. And this is, yeah. this is very- what up, everybody want to take a quick second out of the podcast just to give a shout out to our sponsor. The best criminal defense attorney I know. The last time I got in trouble, I needed somebody that was going to look into my case and actually fight for me and give me the best deal possible. And he did that. And I'll make sure that he does that for you. Make sure you shout me out if you guys reach out to him. They're the sponsor of the convo. You know anybody, a family member or yourself that make a mistake, you want somebody like him on your side. Arash, please let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Thank you. Arash Hashemi, 310-448-1529. Or HashemiLaw.com, H-A-S-H-E-M-I-L-A-W.com, or just Google hashtag Better Call Hash. Remember that, Better Call Hash. You'll find me on every social media channel all over the internet. 310-448-1529. You better call Hash. Very important. So I'm very, very blessed to be one of your your friends and and seen, you. seen you go through this stage and, and, you know, then get to this point and then, you know, uh, Higher Power Wellness is doing well now, and you're helping out a lot of people, and you're reaching a lot of people on your social media as well, bro. Yeah, it's been a it's been an amazing journey to be able to be doing this. You know, I, I'm a big believer, like in God. I walk with Jesus. I'm not a religion man. I'm not pushing religion on anybody, but I I rest in my faith in in my God. Right. So. Yes, sir. He led me to all this stuff, and he's shown me a beautiful future, and, and and part of it is helping a lot of people. And so that's what I set out to do was to help whoever I can that's on the other end of this that wants some help. Whether you're fighting cancer or just losing weight and feeling great, like I can help you get there. It's all the same formula. It's just I might get a little more intense with those that are fighting cancer. But um, sharing my story out there has been great, and being able to be that kind of beacon and and lighthouse, saying, "Hey, I'm in a storm too, but here I am, and this is how we're navigating it." Because I've been fighting this disease for six years, so I've seen several of those remissions. Right? Yeah. We talked about it coming back in my liver; that happened twice, yeah. and two years ago, it came back in my lungs. And and it's, again, I'm saying come back because it's colorectal cancer. But metastases for the de- disease still spread Exists up and go and to different things. So typically, the, the the line stops in the lungs, right? And so it came it came back in my lungs about uh, 
two years ago and we've been monitoring it ever since yeah because because of what you had already been through yeah they make sure that you're consistently going to these checkups right because you got to make sure that it doesn't come back and which to let's be honest everybody should be going to the doctor and getting checkups right regularly on a regular basis you definitely should just catch because if you do have a problem the earlier you catch it the better off you're gonna be the more you know the doctors and everybody can help you absolutely and that's what you and i've seen that with cancer the earlier stage cancers sometimes especially with colorectal and different you know there are quite a few gi tract diseases you know think we can do things uh um to make a difference real early and i but, see you all the time like over these years i've yeah. seen you brother like you know at your checkups doing what you're you know eating every right. two months bro it's every like two months I, i'm in there and then you know you've been you've been doing the hard work you've been doing what it takes you've been eating right you've been drinking right you know and and like nothing to take away from that you know like but it yeah. just it just kept coming back, right? With the and then you said it, and then oh, you it thought, hit my lungs two years ago, and we've been monitoring that. My doctor wanted to put me in chemo back in the day, and and I was about to sign up for it. And this is when I got introduced to a lot of the frequency type healing and cellular regeneration stuff, and got connected with a whole other circle of of healing. And so I st- I did that, and that that has been keeping the chest in check, and like uh, the the lung situation has been good. Not, I mean, it's, there, there, there's spots in there. We haven't done a biopsy on them. We haven't done any, any, uh, you know, PET scans to see them light up. But we know from the disease and what they look like and where they're at. Like that's what my doctor is concluding, right? Like this is cancer. But we haven't had I, by my direction now because I, I'm in control of my lifestyle. We chose a different route than chemotherapy, and we've kept it in check. But I've remained in this two month cycle watching them closely because again like this is there and it can move because it's in the lymph so lymphatic system too right like that that's yeah been something, and, and so. you just got to be like on it all the fucking time bro you know right. and and that's why we're here today right right and that's exactly. why we're that's why we're here today guys because as much as this is you know tough to talk about um you know we're here to talk about something that gary's kind of going through right now right now and, uh, you know, I'm going to get this out, you know, ASAP because I want people to see what, what you what you're going through. And I think we got to be we got to be up there in the front lines through this whole thing, brother. And, you know, what's going on, man? T- t- tell tell me, tell me and, and tell everybody like, yeah, you know, what happened, bro? Well, over the last couple of months, I've been dealing with some neck pain and I've been going into the doctor. What, what, what kind of neck pain? Just are we like, I, I, like, like, in my, sore... like kind of like a nerve type of pain of like shooting up and down. Like if I if I twist to the right or left, like it'll pinch and, and send a signal and like it'll give me a headache. But it started off real mild like a couple months ago. Could, what, did you think maybe it could just be like, yeah, I, like I, an injury I, or something? Yeah, that's yeah and that's what, what everybody like. was saying, because, you know, I of course anytime i i'm hurting somewhere you know i automatically think cancer right like that's where my mind goes being through everything that i've gone through unfortunately that's where my mind goes but also i understand the disease and where it's at and where it's been and so that was like kind of the furthest thing from my mind of what was going on in my neck and i kept talking to my doctor about it and he's like you know it's less than one percent of a chance of time that's going to go above your shoulders you know um so let's not worry about scanning let's just you know, keep going. And so he ended up, we ended up getting a scan. We got one scan done, uh, on my neck and this was about a week and a half ago. And, uh, I finally convinced him and he said, okay, we'll get you your peace of mind and then we'll start you on physical therapy on your neck and move on. Right. So we got the, I was in the machine just in, I wasn't even supposed to see my doctor this day. Right. And so I'm laying in the MRI machine and my head's back and I'm listening to music and then got the headphones on. And then all of a sudden the nurse comes on and says, hey, uh, so we've got Dr. Fakie on the phone and he wants to scan your brain now too. And I thought to myself, well, that can't be good. But then I got back into like, I'm not going to go there yet because we don't know anything for sure because he only wanted to scan the neck. He wasn't going to do the brain at the time. So I was thinking, well, they, m- they might have found something at the top of the scan of the neck. You know, maybe there's something going on there. So lo and behold, they do the brain scan and then he wants to see me in his office. And now I'm tripping because I'm oh. like, Oh, yeah they're like he needs to see you right now so this wasn't all planned and i'm there alone usually i have my mom with me she's like my roll dog to the hospital my wife stays home to make sure that uh, my daughter's taken care of and all that stuff anyway that's just kind of how we roll but i was by myself this day and so i'm cruising over to the the other part of the hospital meet my doctor and then he comes in and he's like gary look he said 
now this is this was a week and a half ago he said uh the neck is not cancer by all suspicion like i don't see it in the mri he says but we did find a tumor in your brain and i was like oh. i said are you sure and he said i'm 100 percent sure it's cancer fuck right and that's exactly what i said to myself and so i i said okay so what's the game plan doc like what do we got is this gonna is it life-threatening and he said no i don't i don't see it to be life-threatening he said we do have a plan and it's going to be brain surgery and radiation and so he brought in the neurosurgeon and i talked to the neurosurgeon and and the best path to get this it's in the cerebellum which is the back part of your brain at the bottom it's right above the the stem and it controls your balance and your equilibrium and all that stuff so that's the part that it's in and uh he said that it's in like if there was to be a good spot in your brain to get brain cancer this would be probably a good spot because they can get it i don't know if they're going to have to cut into the skull or if they're going to go up underneath it it's actually on this side over here on the left um but and and so that was that news is like okay you got brain cancer but the neck like and it's then not we were related. actually we were we were supposed to because we, we were actually supposed to do this podcast after you found that out no i we were doing the well yeah and the, actually and the, and then, we were doing that that day yeah we, we were yeah. scheduled to do and this and then and then we actually can't guys like we canceled that because he, he i text you from the office yeah. I was like i'm not coming bro. yeah and and i was blown away dude I, yeah. could, I like I wasn't honestly I'm not gonna lie to you bro I, I drove to the studio and I just sat here I, and I was in tears and yeah. then uh and then I was like yeah man it's not a good time and then I thought to myself man but we need to be like we need to we need to be front lines with this shit just like Gary has done this whole time we're not gonna we're not gonna let this thing beat us right that's what I thought in my head I immediately got angry yeah. and motivated like I'm not gonna let this affect us right. and then i thought to myself okay let's do it again and then we, we we were like you know what you're right let's do it let's do let's do this again and yeah. then we were like okay we're gonna do it again and then again i was yeah, on my way so here and, we, and yeah and then, then so we got, scheduled for the next monday and then you got more news yeah so then so the neck thing right he says the neurosurgeon and my doctor when i'm in the office originally they say look we're gonna further test this though because we're not a hundred percent sure but we're we're pretty sure like this isn't cancer this is the neck not so i was like man this is more divine intervention like my neck i sprained my neck to find out that i got a tumor on my brain like let's knock this out like good thanks god right so i do that other scan bro and then they call me monday like a couple hours before i'm supposed to come here to do this show and they say gary so um come to find out that spot that your pain in your neck is a tumor it's cancer and so i've got cancer also connected it's not it, it, it's a tumor that's attached to itself to the outside of my c2 in my vertebrae right it hasn't from what my radiology oncologist says just the other day the most recent news that i have about the this thing here is that it has not in, like made any impact on the bone when i first got the news though brother the the nurse that was reading this stuff over the phone and usually like this is all like brand new to me because for the six years i've been going in there for scans and then going to see my doctor and we read the scans together this is the first time i've ever gotten a phone call like this and my wife and i are listening on speakerphone and like all the news is like really bad and i'm like this isn't how this goes down like i'm usually there to talk to you and feel the vibe and see the scans and this wasn't cool so anyway she's like yeah there's like a fracture and all this stuff i'm like what like what what's going like, on like yeah crazy so they wanted to start scheduling radiation for that so long story short is we've paused on radiation for the moment to get this brain, brain surgery can. done and so, you're going and guys like this is why this is an emergency guys because right. Uh, we need we need the support now. We need the prayers as you go into prayer. Absolutely for your brain surgery, brother. And it's going to be on March fourteenth, which is March fourteenth, which I think is when you announce that you're going to release gonna, this. So I'm if gonna, you're watching this right now and it's March fourteenth, throw some prayers up. I'm going to be under the knife. You know they're working on my brain. So and then I'm going to be in the hospital. I'll probably be in ICU for a few days. I'll be in the hospital for a total of no more than a week. But knowing me, I'll get out of there early. Um, we want you guys to, you know, keep him in prayer. All you guys please, that, yeah. that that has been following the story, you know, don't give up because he, we're we're fighting through this. We're gonna oh, get yeah. we're just like we did stage four. We're gonna yeah. get through this now. Yeah, and and it's just whatever else, battlefield in the war, whatever bro. whatever comes with it, we're gonna face it. Yeah. You know, uh, you whatever haunts you, whatever is coming for you, 
You don't run from it anymore in your lives, guys. You face it. You turn around and you yeah. stand there and you fight to the death and whatever it takes, you don't give up, you don't cower, you stay motivated, you stay blessed. You think you think about what got you here and what you've been through and you keep fighting to the very end because that's what your people want and that, that that's what you need to do. And and brother, like it's I know it's a crazy time, but you know, we're gonna be with you in prayer and I think, you know, everyone's gonna be there and you're here for a reason. You got a lot more to do a lot more people to help, a lot more people to touch. And I think this is just another part of your amazing, um, tough story, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, ble- you know, God bless your family, brother, and you. uh, your, your wife and your daughter, yeah, uh, nice. which I see them, you know, by your side through all this. And, yeah. you know, God bless them and, and what they've been through. And, and, you know, um, <clears throat> I, I always am praying for you guys and I know you're going to be successful. And, you know, what I wanted to do today was have you here to talk about what you've been through and also what you're going through. And what I want to do with this podcast is we want to get the word out. And what I want to do is I want to be a part of helping, you know, people with cancer and yeah. I want to be help. I want to be a part of this. So what we want to do is we want to make a, a, a way possible. We're going to put a link to this episode to where, you guys will be able to donate to Gary's uh, foundation. It, it is right. So uh, happened to start a foundation a, a couple of years ago called the higher power foundation and the higher power. So higher power started out as a hashtag to root me on originally to fight for my life. Then I turned it into higher power wellness to be the products to, to be kind of like the foundational pieces, the lifestyle that I want to teach people. So these are all great products. You can find those on my website you can support our business by buying our products and being clients. That'd be fantastic. And a portion of those proceeds actually go to help other people fight cancer. So I've been, I've been donating the money that we've been making to give back into the community because one of the biggest side effects to cancer is the financial side effect. And uh, people can't afford the good stuff. And I, I just didn't want to sit back and say, well, you gotta, I got to make all these profits and do that. Like, so I've been putting everything back into the community and I want to do bigger. So my whole goal with the Higher Power Foundation is to give away my products and mentorship and that frontline love to a million people that can't afford it when they're fighting cancer. So 100%. that's the mission for the foundation. We do have it. It's, it's a 501c3. We, we have higherpowerfoundation.org. We'll put links in the bio, but higherpowerfoundation.org. You can go there. You can make a donation, whether it's $10 or $10,000. It doesn't matter what it is. It's going to bless somebody else. It does cost us about five to $700 a month to take care of a, a, a warrior. I don't call them cancer so it's patients. Not, so it's These not are, cheap. It's not cheap, but but, but anything, it's worth it. But and anything, it works. But and anything we've got you can give is appreciated. Yes. And it's helping. So it's helping yes. the mission. It doesn't that's what I said. It doesn't if it's a dollar, I don't know. Like if even if you want to, you know, purchase products for yourself, a, a portion of those proceeds are gonna go and it's gonna make a difference. We do need big donations to knock down. I mean, a million people to cover for that type of expense is, is a lot, but 100%. that's a God sized goal. And that's why we need God's people to come together We're we were designed and put on this earth to be in community and learn from one another. I'm going through a hellacious war yes, you are, bro. and I've been through the depths of hell, bro. I've seen them I, and, and it's devastating. And that's why I can stand here firm today. Like I'm going into brain surgery in three days from right now. I, my world's been rocked, bro. And, and I'm standing here with firm conviction that I'm going to be okay, that I'm going to pull through this. And God's going to meet me right where I need to be met in the next few days. Like he already Let's is go. here with me because he's there with me every single day. And I've done the work with these types of products and the lifestyle that I live to put my body in a great position to best, win. The best, like look the at me right position, now, bro. Yes. Like don't feel sorry for me. I'm not asking for sympathy no, from no. anybody. No. What I'm asking for is prayers and love and support because I'm a man on a mission and I'm not done yet because God already gave me the plan. I told you that at the beginning of the episode. 100%. I'm not done yet, bro. 100%. Like This is just a little bump in the road. It's something else that I get to learn from to share with other people because I've been working with people with brain cancer. Dude, brother, I just brother, haven't gone brother, through it myself you're, yet. Like I said, you're, you're a, I, I hate, I'm not going to cuss. You are an inspiration, brother. Like really, like I mean it. Like for you to even come here, you know, and just sit in front of these cameras and talk about this, and and you know, I, I don't, like, man, it's 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 crazy what you're going through, and but having that mindset, that warrior mindset, is like it changes your whole perception of everything. Mm. 
Yeah. And, I, and, and I know you got this and, you know, we're all going to be rooting for everybody. I'm sure that is watching this. We're going to be rooting for you. We're going to be putting good vibes in the air for you. And you're yeah. going to get through this and you're going to come out on top. And, you know, brother, this is like a very, very special episode. Uh, not only am I going to, you know, put all the links to we, we want to help, you know, all the other people uh, fighting cancer. But for those of you guys that don't know. Like, uh, this touch is really, really home to me as well because um, when I was uh, when I was becoming a black belt, I had a student that, of mine that I trained from Purple Well with me, and he he, uh, he, had, he ended up passing away from brain cancer. Mm. And uh, rest in peace to, to Paul Roberts. And uh, he was a jiu-jitsu guy, and he was just the coolest dude, man. And I watched him go through that whole battle, you know. And I was one of the only people that he could train with. He would come with me. And, like, even though, like, he, you know, he was sick and going through it, he couldn't move as much, I'd make sure he had fun and laugh. And, and I just I just miss him. And so this touches home to me, brother. And I'm going to be praying for you, and I'm going to do everything I can to always help you and support you, get your message Appreciate out that. there. And, guys, you know, life is real. If you guys can get anything from today, is get the get get the fact that your health is number one. You're you're like I said, you have one vehicle, you have one body the whole life. Take care of yourselves. Don't do drugs. Don't 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 hurt yourself. Don't don't do things you shouldn't be doing. Be careful what you eat and what you drink. You have one organ, you have one liver, you have yeah. one brain, one heart. So it's your decision ultimately. But I'm tired of seeing and losing so many of my close friends. Uh, and also rest in peace to another brother of mine named Litsy who, who passed away from testicular cancer. Um, I've, I'm tired of seeing it. And if there's anything we can do to be on the front lines to battle this shit, we're going to do it. And we're going to live healthier lives and be better about taking care of ourselves. Gary, as you get ready for this fight, brother, thank you so much, man. It means the world to me. Like yeah. you're whether you know it or not you're a big inspiration to me bro Thank like you, every brother. every day i i know i can't i can't half fast nothing bro mm -hmm. you know what i mean cuz there's people going through a lot more heavier shit than me so get your ass up and get to it eat right work out do the right things help people that's what it's about bro that's how you take inspiration from a story like mine as you put it to work and you have that mentality for yourself you can't sit there and say wow that's inspirational you know uh, he really changed his life and you know, the life change that I made has put me in this very strong position. So let's not get that twisted. Like, this is a very freak thing, and we're going to knock it out, and I'll still be healthy, and we're still going to do the same thing. So follow along, Higher Power Wellness at uh, Instagram. So make Higher sure that. Higher Power Wellness, guys, on Instagram. Anything else? Yeah. Like, like, how can they get a hold of you? Please, once again, tell everybody, like, because we're going we're gonna to put the links in the bio. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have Gary send them to me, and I'm just going to copy and paste inside yeah. the description of, of the YouTube video of the podcast. When I drop it, it'll be the emergency podcast, the first one and of course this was the biggest emergency podcast that i could do and it, it serves the purpose because my brother is going to going to war and we're going to war together it's not, you're not brother. alone brother thank you you're not alone yeah gary yeah thank let you. everybody know so yeah if you want to follow along on the journey definitely i i uh i post a lot of content on instagram where i have in the past you know and, and i plan on posting uh, through the process here, my healing and, and the journey going into this surgery. You're probably catching on right now as I'm getting out of surgery. So you're going to see me coming out of it. You're going to see me thrive through it. You're going to see me inspire other people, but you can go on there. You can see other stories of people that have that I've worked with before. And you can learn a lot from what I have to share. But if you want to support my mission and support my fight, help fuel my purpose. I've been given uh, uh, an incredible opportunity to bless lives let's do it and, let's and go. i'm not gonna stop at this like there there this is just a minor bump in the road for me to figure some things out on this battlefield to continue my mission forward to helping people in their battle of their life and so if you want to help help me in any way support my business and support my foundation Follow along, give me prayers, all that stuff. I love that. Like more prayers, the better. Like that's the easiest thing that you could do for free. Like there's nothing, no financial commitment to that, just your time and your relationship with God. So please send those up. But if you want to support me at any level, you've got a way to support me through my business. You'll be a client. You'll have access to great products. 
Uh, you, you can even have access to me coaching you personally, but you know, if that's what you want. Uh, and if you don't want the healthy stuff and, and that's not for you, cool. And you want to help this mission, Higher Power Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization. You have the tax write-off, but you'll be blessing not just my mission and purpose of helping other people. You're going to be blessing that person on the front lines of their their fight. And I'm telling you, it it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. So Hell we yeah, can make brother. a difference together. So higher, higherpowerwellness.org? Or higherpowerwellness.com. Higher power right. wellness. And higher higher power is H E Y E R. Just for you that are just listening, we're again links are in the bio, and you'll you can see it on my shirt here if you've got it zoomed in. H E Y E R. That's my last name. Higher power wellness. dot com is the business is the uh, the product site, um, and then uh, higher power foundation. dot org. Higher power. There, we there go. you go. There's the there .org, go, and that's the foundation where we can go make a difference together in this cancer community. Brother, respect. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, beyond the cameras, beyond the microphones, I'm gonna be there with you through this. Absolutely. So, you know, we'll talk much more than this. But guys, thank you guys for tuning in. I told you guys we had something, you know, serious to talk about. I hope, you know, we can help somebody with this episode. I hope. Uh, we spread the message about how important your life and your health is and what you put in your body. Uh, and guys, support my brother, you know, and he's going through it. And let's, above everything, prayers, guys. Prayers, you know, like, subscribe, tell your mom, your daddy, your auntie, and your cousins, too. We're bringing you guys the real life. Legacy TV, the Convo Podcast. Thank you, guys. Peace. Peace.